And now to Washington, D.C. for a direct call on our hotline. Oh, oh, oh. Here's a Muppet News flag. Dateline, New York City. A former circus daredevil who billed himself as Boffo the Human Cannonball fired himself out of a cannon yesterday into a crowd of holiday shoppers. Fortunately, there were no injuries to the passers-by. Boffo was not so lucky. Said his wife, the former Mrs. Boffo, I guess I'll just have to pick up the pieces and live my life. Here's a Muppet News flash. Dateline, Brooklyn, New York. Uh, Harry Oblong, a retired New York City bus driver, said that he is holding that state as a hostage and will not release it until he has paid $50 million in cash. <laughs> Mr. Oblong, whom state officials say is not playing with a full deck, says that he will not disclose the whereabouts of the state of New York, but does say it has enough food and water to last for 10 more days. <laughs> the Atlantic Ocean has just been kidnapped. Disappearance of the ocean was first reported by lighthouse keeper Murray Patterson. He was awakened late last night when 500 fish pounded on his door asking for water. <laughs> Authorities suspect that the ocean is being held prisoner in an apartment somewhere in Newark. A ransom note has reportedly been received. The kidnappers are demanding two Christmases each year and a hug from mommy every night. Dateline Fresno, Mr. Thomas Galli, or Galley, spent the last 27 months teaching his pet chicken to dance classical ballet. <laughs> last Saturday, the chicken passed her auditions and became a member of the Royal Copenhagen Ballet. <laughs> Unfortunately, Mrs. Galley didn't wish to move to Denmark, so she fricasseed the ballerina for lunch. News flash! <laughs> Billy Lee Boomer, a gas station attendant from Pennybox, Texas, reported a flying saucer landed at his station last night. Said Mr. Boomer. Well, they didn't want no guys. They just wanted to use restroom. Can't say they blame them. Said they'd traveled 83 million miles without a stop. <laughs> News flash. Arnold Stockman, a retired shoe salesman, recently had a most unusual experience, and we at Muppet News Central feel it is a story that should be shared with everyone. Here in his own words is Mr. Stockman to tell you of this most bizarre event. Uh, well, it was about a week ago, mm -hmm. and I was sitting at home watching television. It must have been about 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Suddenly the phone rang. Well, I picked it up, mm -hmm. but there wasn't anybody there. So I hung up, and then I went back to watching the television. Darndest thing. Unusual events occur, you'll hear it first on Muppet News. <laughs> middleweight champion Carl Boomer says that since he has defeated all challengers in the middleweight ranks, he will defend his title next week against himself. <laughs> we go now to Boomer's training camp. Tell us, Carl, do you think this will be a tough fight? Well, Muppet reporter, it will probably be one of my toughest, but I think I will be able to knock myself out in the 10th round. <laughs> For the first few rounds, I will work on my body blows. Then I'll go for my head. Carl's body may last two rounds, but I think his head has already gone down for the count. Here's a Muppet News flag. Mrs. Lola Bramswell of Covington, Kentucky, has come upon a most unique diet. For the past ten years, she has eaten nothing but seaweed. Uh, tell us, Mrs. Bramswell, has eating only seaweed presented any problems? No. Not really, except that twice a day, I find myself going in and out with the tide. That's not easy to do in Kentucky. Copenhagen, Denmark. Dr. Felix Ogelbaum says that after 30 years concentrated research, he has discovered the cure for the common cold. Our Muppet cameras are on the scene and we'll speak with Dr. Ogelbaum about this great medical breakthrough. Dr. Ogelbaum. Yeah, yeah, I'm Felix Ogelbaum in Copenhagen, Denmark. Yes, Dr. Ogelbaum, can you tell us about this cure? Yeah, of course. It was right under our noses. Do you believe that? I'm so excited. First, you stay away from sick people. That's very important. Then you wrap your head in a number 10 size brown paper bag. And you pour honey over yourself. And you hold your breath for about an hour or so, eh? Uh, and this will cure the common cold? Positively. <laughs> and then again. <laughs> yes, uh, well, thank you very much, Dr. Ogobaum. 
Remember, friends, whenever big news breaks, you certainly won't hear it here. <laughs> Dateline, Dallas, Texas. Mrs. Billy Lee Bonkers of that city recently entered the Guinness Book of Records by establishing the World Jumping in Place record. Mrs. Bonkers began jumping in place three months ago and so far has jumped 652,000 times. 652,001? Mrs. Bonkers. 652,002? Uh, Mrs. Bonkers, do you need any special incentive to keep you going? Oh, my, no, I have all the incentive that I need. Uh, how's that? I am standing on a hot plate. Oh, oh, 2003. Truly a courageous and inspiring story. Where do we get these nuts? <laughs> news flash? There is no news tonight. Muppet news bulletin. Dateline, New Brunswick. Mr. Melvin Cosgrove climbed a 30-foot pole and scrambled onto a six-by-six-foot platform. His goal? To break the world's record in flagpole sitting. That was 16 years ago, and yesterday his wife started wondering how Cosgrove was doing, especially since he was 84 years old when he started. <laughs> Bernie's climbed the pole this morning and found that he had indeed passed away. As a fitting tribute to her brave husband, Mrs. Cosgrove announced that for the next 10 days, she will fly him at half-mast. <laughs> Came up at news flag. Dateline, Mobile, Alabama. Mrs. Beverly Shepard has made aviation history in this southern city. Last week, Mrs. Shepard made a pair of wings, strapped them to her body, and flew to Dallas, Texas. Here she is direct from Texas to tell us the details. Gosh, am I really on TV? Yes, Mrs. Shepard, you are. Now, can you tell us the details of this astounding accomplishment? Well, it was so astounding. It was so easy. I just made my wings out of aluminum, and I covered them with chicken feathers, and then I fitted them with straps for my arms. Yes, yes, go on. Then I went out to the airport and boarded a plane for Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> What's the big deal? I'm sure I have no idea. Here is a Muppet News Flash. Our newsroom has been flooded with calls today reporting that furniture all over town has been turning into monsters. Seven people have allegedly been attacked by a wandering pack of sofas at the east edge of town. A dining room table set for eight reportedly ate the eight it was set for. When contacted for comment, Sheriff David Goles assured Muppet News Central that the rumor was false. According to Goles, there is no way for a piece of furniture to turn into a monster. Scientists throughout the city confirmed that such an occurrence would be impossible. Of course, tells one that inanimate objects cannot turn into monsters. Still, he grows a few The mass hysteria could be due to what psychologists are calling thermophobia, a dread fear of the rising prices of home furnishings. The phenomenon does seem to relate to the cost of living increase during the past month. But people are advised to relax, secure in the knowledge that their furniture will not turn into a monster. And that's all tonight from Muppet News. Good night. Well, that last item about furniture is ridiculous. Dateline, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Doctors in Milwaukee have reported a phenomenon never before witnessed in medical annals. Mr. Gus Klinger, a steam fitter, has over a three-month period turned into a rug. <laughs> Here is his wife, Mrs. Klinger, to explain what happened. Well, it all started as a simple case of shag pile on the belly, but then gradually it spread until he is now a 9 by 12 carpet with fringe. I am just going to have to sue for divorce, that's all. Well, why is that, Mrs. Klinger? Because he does not match the drapes. Muppet News Flash! Dateline... Uh. Oh. <clears throat> Sorry. Muppet News Flash. Dateline London. Mrs. Lola Thomas of that city has just finished eating an entire diesel tractor. Tell me, Mrs. Thomas, why did you do such a thing? 
Well, the doctor told me I had an iron deficiency, you see. So I started on a couple of doorknobs and the occasional typewriter. But there's nothing really quite like a good bit of diesel tractor with your chips and peas, is there? What an extraordinary feat. I mean, how was it done? Oh, a medium rare or thereabouts. Is this lady making a fool of me? Dateline, Boston, Massachusetts. Mrs. Gretchen Powers of that city is trying to enter the Guinness Book of Records by completing the world's longest sentence. She began talking six weeks ago, and neighbors say she hasn't stopped since. Our Muppet cameras are in her home now. Uh, Mrs. Powers. And the dog fell over the nose of the tree, went into the spaghetti factory, while six million men marched in their foghorns under a double-decker bus whose onion uh, soup spoke of undermining uh, Mrs. Powers, the welfare if we could of the country. For a moment. But for the grace of the noodle pie, go I, said the spokesman, for the group who wore turtleneck convertible uh, as the rain uh, fell for the first the time since the bucket was long, well but I'm the side the point of the was covered in uh, what was said, not the fault of the blueberry bush, but instead uh, when the investigators arrived at the corset factory... Uh, Mrs. The Powers' husband, <laughs> Carl, said, said it makes about as much sense as anything she she said, he said this from his home at the Clinging Vine Home for the Crazed. Moving up at Newsflash. Dateline Moscow. Sergei Lanovsky, whom the Russians claim is the world's oldest living human, celebrated his 196th birthday yesterday by taking a deep breath. <laughs> Sergei has 96 children, 150 grandchildren, and 228 great grandchildren. <laughs> None of whom visit him. <laughs> Said his youngest son, Leonid, he smells funny. 